NFL free agency is right around the corner, and the Indianapolis Colts have plenty of cap space to make some moves. So where will Chris Ballard look to add in free agency, and who are some possible targets for the Colts? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Horseshoe Huddle podcast presented by Fan Nation on SI.com, part of the Fans First Sports Network. My name is Andrew Moore, and as always, I'm joined here by my fellow analyst and writer at Horseshoe Huddle, Drake Wally. Drake, the Colts come into free agency with around $50 million in cap space after you take out uh, uh, the, the franchise tag number that Mike that was placed on Michael Pittman Jr. on, on Tuesday. So definitely, definitely a good chunk of money to make some moves. Now, some of that will go to uh, uh, some in-house guys probably like Grover Stewart, Kenny Moore. And we talked about those guys about a month ago or so, but looking at the outside free agent class, boy, there are some position groups that are just chocked full of really top tier talent and the Colts could be looking to buy in those areas. Yeah. And you know, initially you always think about the Indianapolis Colts, regardless if it seems that the state of where they're at as a franchise, you know, they're not going to go big. They're not going to, you know, do anything big in free agency. That's just how Ballard is people. That's also why they have $50 million still available after your franchise tagging a guy that's worth Michael Pittman's money. So I, with the the depth of talent, with how many names that are on the market could, you know, hypothetically fit the Colts, it's almost like now you just cannot pass up these opportunities. And you can't tell me there's not going to be some money left over even after you – if you retain guys like Kenny Moore, Grover, and, and Julian. It's just – it's an awesome time, and it's especially more awesome because you have your quarterback, and it's, you know, up in the air who they're going to go pick, if anybody. Well, and that rookie quarterback, Anthony Richardson, on that rookie deal, you know, that yeah. offers you some flexibility. You can oh, make yeah. moves that the Colts really under Chris Ballard haven't been able to make before, you know, because they're not paying high dollar for a quarterback at this time. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, if the Colts do go after some some bigger free agents uh, that, that hasn't been the norm in the past. Uh, I, I do think that there might be maybe one or two, but again, I'm still thinking there's, there's uh, most of the time the Colts are going to stick with those those middle middle tier uh, 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 middle tier signings and 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 really bet on those like a Samson Ebukam signing last season. The chat is already. We've got multiple super chats already. True, beautiful. The first one hey. in here tonight. Uh, thank you so much, True, for the super chat. We really appreciate it. He says Ballard goes Jerry Maguire and shows players the money. I don't know about that. We'll have to see. Uh, uh, that just isn't his his mo, and and uh, and it takes two to tango. The player actually has to want to come to Indy as well. But Truett, thank you so much, buddy, for all of your support. Uh, uh, and then stats, Matt. Or, or, or I'm sorry, not stats. Well, stats, Matt is in the chat too. He says, "What's up? Time for the fun to begin, as always." But then we've got That's the right. C the CFO already in here asking questions. Should we? Be be organizing free agents by Raz as well, or do the Colts just care at this point about their on-field production? Does this change for guys coming off their rookie contracts? And and Patrick, I'm not I'm not I'm gonna hold off on that for now. We'll answer that uh here in a second, but that's gonna be a really sure. good question to kind of kick off our free agent primer. And of course, Patrick, thank you so much for all of your support, buddy. Uh NFL nerd is in the house. This is absolutely the year to spend specifically on proven offensive weapons. We need to know how good ar5 really can be definitely want to pr place a priority on putting uh, everything around anthony richardson and then wyatt has a little bit different take you know beef up the defense through free agency draft guys for offense so definitely different ways that the colts can go about this break but drake but tonight we are going to be talking about the outside class of free agents we like i said a couple i don't know maybe about four weeks ago i think it was like february 12th or something right after the super bowl we talked mm -hmm. about the in-house free agents drake now it's time to talk about the guys that the colts could be adding to this roster so that's what we're going to do tonight and then go through all the latest colts news and rumors because there's definitely some there as well if you haven't done so please go follow us on all of our socials like horseshoe huddle on facebook follow at colts on fn on x and subscribe to the horseshoe huddle youtube channel hit that bell so you know when drake and i go live especially during this busy time of the off season because you never know when exactly we'll be going live and if you can't catch us on youtube apple spotify google wherever you listen to podcasts we're on there as well so make sure you subscribe give us a five-star review so we can reach other colts fans just like you and guys don't forget to pre-order the indie draft guide as well it is still draft
draft season. Uh, the Indie Draft Guide will have over 225 plus write ups on all the prospects in the 2024 class uh, with different features, uh, the specific fits with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so make sure you go pre order that. If you use the link in our description and the code DRAFTMIS at checkout, you get a dollar off that as well. So make sure to go pre order your copy of the Indie Draft Guide. You won't want to be without it. So, Drake, let's dive right into it, buddy. The Colts free agency preview. And we're going to be talking about the positions to address tonight, uh, as well as some targets that we think the Indianapolis Colts will be looking at at each one of those positions. And now I want to get back to Patrick's question. Again, Patrick, thank you so much for all of your support. His question says, should we be organizing free agents by Raz as well? Or do the Colts just take care, uh, just care at this point about their on-field NFL production? Does this change for guys coming off their rookie contract? So where, where Patrick is getting with this, and, and Drake, I know that, that you know this, is the Colts always like to, uh, specifically when you're looking at the NFL draft, take guys that have really high relative athletic scores you know they want to go for those 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 top tier athletes and those high-end traits but in, in, in my opinion in free agency that's not necessarily the case you know in free agency it seems like the colts while they do still want the the guys to be pretty athletic doesn't seem they they like they play such a high premium on that and and two examples of that's Danico autry who i think his raz was in the the middle threes uh, as far as his athletic production at the combine in the pre-draft process and Rodney McLeod, his was also in the threes. Both those guys were veterans that were kind of, again, on those that low-risk, high-reward deals. But the Colts brought them in, and they turned out to be fantastic Colts. So in my opinion, I don't think them looking at like a, a Raz or or uh, what what they did at the combine or their their athletic traits. I think it's more about what they what they produced on in the NFL and their fit within either Shane Steichen's scheme or Gus Bradley's scheme. But what do you think? Yeah, it's that was a beautiful way to answer that question. And also, thank you so much, Patrick, for, for the super chat again, my friend. Um, yes, basically, I love the way that you put that because when they're bringing guys into the NFL, you have no slate of anything to look at as, as to what they've done in the league. OK, you do have college tape, but there's there's just a lot of data that says that the freak athletes are the good draft picks. That's why Chris Ballard follows that trend. And he he's seen it over a long time now. I actually told somebody this not long ago on, on X. I was like, I love the fact that he does that. Right. But I also wish he wouldn't live and die by it sometimes in, in the draft. Uh, but like you said, on the other end, the, the the relative athletic score doesn't really matter as much, you know, with free agents because they've got that NFL experience. You can just look back on it and say, oh, well, he came into the league, not the greatest athlete, but against standard, he he was fantastic. So therefore, he's fantastic. You know, like it's it's totally a different ball game. But I will say I saw Ken, uh, I wrote a piece. I think it's Kentley Platt invented the RAS. And he, the reason I wrote the piece is because he said that the Colts have hilariously almost followed the the RAS model, and they've been one of the most RAS draft heavy teams over the last decade. So it's it's pretty crazy. Even back to Grigson's time, they were drafting athletes then too. And as Deep says, we need a ten out of ten Riz score for all Colts players. <laughs> Love that. And That's the quarterbacks hilarious. got it. So, so. <laughs> so hey, Deep, thanks for joining us, buddy. But but yeah, and and Drake, I also think it comes down to when when the Colts are drafting, and and literally this is. I think Chris Ballard's even spoken to this before. I mean, you don't know exactly what these guys are going to be in the NFL. The mm -hmm. you're 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 every single one of these guys is a projection. So the Colts feel like they're going to hit more often than not if you're taking those high level athletes because their athleticism a lot of times will will determine their floor. Uh, and so you can get a better gauge of, of what that that player will at least be in the NFL. With free agency, it's a little bit different. You've had time to see what these guys are in the NFL and and how they are going to play uh, in the profession in the National Football League. So great question, Pat. Patrick, really appreciate the super chat and a fantastic way to get us rolling here. So, like I said, we're going to run through these positions, kind of talk about what the Colts need at the positions and, and some targets uh, for each one. And if you guys want, make sure to throw your targets of each one of these positions in the chat as well. Uh, so that way we can all all kind of talk about who who's on our wish list for this free agency season. But, Drake, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't start out, if we didn't start out with this incredibly deep free agent class 
for the safeties. My goodness, it just seems like even before, you know, there was going to be a couple of guys at the top of the class, but before, over the last week or two, when when teams are cutting players to try to get down under the salary cap before the new league year starts on Wednesday, I mean, the names that have become free agents at the safety group, you know, we're talking about multiple multi-time all pro in Justin Simmons from the Denver Broncos who was released today uh Jamal Adams from the uh San Francisco or I'm sorry the Seattle Seahawks uh Quandre Diggs from the Seattle Seahawks uh Micah Hyde uh Jordan Poyer both guys from the the Buffalo Bills uh CJ Gardner Johnson from the the Detroit uh uh the Detroit Lions, the, the, and that's not even getting to some of the other guys like uh, 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 like a Xavier McKinney, who yeah. I know a lot of Colts fans are are talking about, or a Cam Curl, uh, guys like that 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 are just really good safeties in the NFL. And then Julian Blackman, the Colts' own safety, uh, will become a free agent. So there's just so many guys that are going to be available for the taking. And with such a saturated safety class, in my opinion, Drake, I don't know if any of these contracts are going to be like crazy high just because simple economics, supply and demand. There's a lot of supply out there, and there's only going to be so much demand. Yeah, and it's uh, it's really interesting to see because even a guy like Jordan Poyer, he's still coming off of a pretty damn good season. I mean, given the fact he's almost 33 years old and the dude's been doing this for, you know, about, I, I think, eight, nine years, that is still, if you really want the veteran uh, presence, it's a, a, a 30, an early 30-year-old safety, I think, will hit far more often than an early 30 year old cornerback there's mm-hmm. just less to do and and there's less to rely on and a lot of times you can rely on sheer athleticism to play that position so like we were talking about before the show andrew this is just a team that does doesn't typically go that route and they're like we got to get a free agent but this is different who could have ever predicted that that all of these names would just fall to free agency it's almost like the Colts are like okay we could push the hell out of nick cross Right, And you could absolutely give him, let's say Cross doesn't work out and or he's good, but the guy you signs even better, then you've got yourself an, a perfect depth piece. And Rodney Thomas probably finds himself almost completely out of the rotation. Not saying it's a, it's a good thing, but he needs to also be pushed. So it, it's almost impossible to pass up these guys. There's probably, there's so many names that could fit that role. Right. So. Yeah, I would agree. And and considering, like you said, the, considering the uh, the Colts safety situation where your best safety, Julian Blackman, is a free agent and you've got two guys in, in Rodney Thomas and Nick Cross that have shown flashes, certainly, but cert- but they haven't put it all together, you know, and, and I think that at, at the very minimum, you need to have guys out there pushing them. Uh, uh, and then, I mean, we all have high hopes for Daniel Scott and his ability to play. Uh, but he just hasn't he hasn't had the opportunity to show it yet and so i it's going to be very interesting to see how this how this safety group really really goes through free agency uh the types of deals that they are going to be getting and and things like that so so drake in your mind uh what do you think who are some of the guys that you think the colts could potentially target at the safety position and and do you think it's going to be uh both strong safety and free safety do you think there i've seen some people out there say that you know the colts might just go into next season with cross and thomas battle it out at free safety and they're only going to focus it in focus in on strong safety uh, what do you think Chris Ballard and, and the Colts front office is thinking right now? So I I respect people that believe in Nick Cross. Totally do. Especially some of the stuff he showed last year. He showed that spark. But you also, he's going into year three. All right. He's still super young. But this is the NFL. You need to start pushing pushing him now. Okay. Because you had to remove him the previous year because he was so bad. He was just not ready. And Rodney McLeod had to step in. So you want to push him to make sure he's the guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other reason is these guys are cheap. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Justin freaking Simmons, Simmons is a spot track market value and it's $11 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, this is a guy who kind of like Poyer, maybe even more so with a higher ceiling, he can freaking play man. And, and it's like, it's almost impossible to not consider that. So these guys are going to be getting at least a couple offers. I just think that the Colts, a guy that really intrigues me is Xavier McKinney. I love the age. I loved his upside. He's looked great at times. He had five interceptions in a season. Um, he's still young enough to build and be there multiple years. So 
I think that there's a couple guys here. I think they need to avoid a guy like Jamal Adams, though he seems like a locker room cancer. <laughs> you're not you're not wrong there. It just seemed like wherever Adams goes, it's filled with a lot of a lot Always. of turmoil and a lot of uh, 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 friction in that locker yep. room. But but yeah, I mean, I think Xavier McKinney would be a perfect fit for the Indianapolis Colts. You know, he's young, 25 years old. Uh, the, he or not even 25 years old. Excuse me. Uh, former second round pick. Uh, and if, for those people that think the Colts should still continue to go after high end athletes uh, for free agency, McKinney was a very high, a very, very high end athlete. You know, uh, the ball production is there. Uh, you can put him in the box. He can be your, your deep safety as well. He's not limited in that regard. I think he'd be a fantastic fit, you know. Another one that I had talked about was, was Cam Curl, guy that I thought was probably going to get much more on the open market. But with with how saturated the safety the safety group is, you're probably you could probably swing a Cameron curl. I'm also not gonna not gonna yeah. discount Julian Blackman, you know, because Blackman had a career gear. Uh, do the Colts end up sticking with Blackman uh, and try to use that that money that they save because it seems like Julian Blackman isn't going to get the the type of big deal that he was hoping for just with that was with the quality of safeties on the open market currently uh, does julian blackman come back and and but moving to the free safety side I, i'm going to continue to to push this guy alohi gill or alohi gilman excuse me from the los angeles chargers a guy that i think fits perfectly in 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 Gus Bradley's system as as that deep free safety. And, and he just seems like the kind of free agent that the Colts typically go after. You know, a guy that didn't make too much noise early on, had a really, really good season last year, kind of starting to come up. And, and it seems like Ballard could get him in the second, maybe even the third wave of free agency on a low-risk, high-reward type deal, like a two-year, uh, uh, maybe maybe $8, million, eight to $10 million deal for a, a low -heat. Gilman and he just comes in and he performs his butt off you know so that's that's the type of thing that I I would imagine the Colts would do uh mm -hmm. the guys like the big name guys like a Justin Simmons uh like a Jamal Adams uh even a Quandre Diggs which I think Diggs would be a fantastic fit as free safety as well I just don't see the Colts going after those guys you know uh, I think that they there would probably focus in on that again for the safety position that second cut tier you know, and I want to throw Jeremy Chin in there too. Fantastic athlete, local guy. Uh, I think he would be the uh, the strong safety fit. But hey, I, I think the theme of this is though, there's just so many different safeties to choose from. Really, it's it's, it's the Colts are going to have their pick of who fits our system best. Uh, who's going to add? Mo who's going to add? Uh, good character and and be a good addition to the locker room and and who do we think is going to be the guy that helps us helps that back end of the secondary really come together so there's there's just so many options to choose from yeah and uh, real quick about alohi gilman i know that's a name that a lot of people don't hear uh, as a as a household name like a justin simmons or jamal right. adams but look man seventh overall in pff overall uh, defensive grade among all safeties we're talking right behind kyle hamilton who's honestly being regarded as an, one of the best defensive players in the league at this point and then as far as coverage the dude's fifth i mean he's he's got it and like you said two years 10 million that that's about what he's going to cost he's not going to be top dollar and all he's done is produce and he's only gotten better so go look into alohi gilman people everyone's talking about the big name guys he is a perfect fit he's going to be cheaper and the dude's played his ass off and he's been successful I would, I would agree. Uh, Shout out to Shaheen, our good buddy Shaheen with the super chat coming back in to $10 super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. Uh, and Shaheen says this off season has Ballard licking his chops value, value, value. Cheers to Patrick. Are we going to end up with another super chat off uh, tonight between Shaheen and, and Patrick? Oh, I know that's happened a few times, but Hey, we end up doing that. We'll be on here for, for two hours uh, and, and, and Drake, Drake will be on the floor. So uh, really, really appreciate it. Shaheen. <laughs> But you're absolutely right. There's so much value in a lot of these positions on the free agent market and specifically where the Colts seem to need it, particularly obviously at that safety position. But there are other positions as well that I think the Colts are going to be able to find value at throughout throughout free agency and and it might not necessarily be the top names but it's guys that that are going to come in and and add quality depth to to your team. 
Yeah, and at the end of the day, a lot of these needs the Colts have are depth needs. Now, safety is interesting. It wasn't really, in my opinion, like a top a top need as far as like bringing somebody in because you believed a little bit in Nick Cross. But with all these safeties now, it drops their value. Man, you can get them at a bargain. You can get a hell, hell of a player at a bargain right now. Exactly. Thank you, Shaheen, for all of your support. As always, brother, we really, really do appreciate it. Let's move down a little bit in the secondary, Drake, and talk about the cornerback position, you know, and and I think here at cornerback, this is where the Colts could make a big move. You know, Mm -hmm. I I, I think that, again, safety, you could potentially see it, but I do think that the Colts want to add a veteran cornerback to this already pretty young group, especially when you had two rookies in Juju Brents and Jalen Jones start for, for most of the season on the outside. So I think priority one at cornerback is obviously keeping Kenny Moore in house, but don't be surprised if, if the Colts try to add a, a veteran starter on the outside, uh, on the opposite side of Brents. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking right here at the uh, available free agents for cornerback. Now it's, it's not as ridiculous as safety, um, but man, you've still got some solid guys, even on the lower ends or in the middle. I mean, there's a lot of guys that could make an impact. Uh, we can jump into some of these of who we think the Colts might target, but I mean, you got guys like JC Jackson, Dore Jackson, Darius Williams, Kendall Fuller. I mean, there's even guys like Jeff Akuda and, and uh, Cheetah Bay Wuzier. So those are just mm-hmm. a couple names of who could who could uh, fit the Colts and whether they want to go high or low, you know, type of pay is completely up to them. It's it's just a bunch of other guys similar to safety, not as many, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. But to me, it seems like just for hearing the rumblings that uh, and we'll talk about the luxurious need uh, rumors here uh, at, towards the end of the show. But. I mean, if the Colts are interested in Legereus Sneed, uh, the cornerback for the Kansas City Chiefs, it does seem like the Colts aren't afraid to go to go big big name hunting uh, at at cornerback this off season. So uh, that's and this has kind of been in line with with some of the things that I've been hearing recently. You know that, that that's why I'm kind of shying away from the Colts possibly taking a cornerback in that first round and more towards a pass catcher like a Brock Bowers or a Brian Thomas Jr. because it seems like they want to add a veteran presence at the cornerback position and and Drake. Uh, this guy, I think you've brought him up multiple times. I know Patrick has brought him up multiple times to me. Kendall Fuller from the Washington Commanders. Mm-hmm. Drake, I think that would be a perfect fit for the Indianapolis Colts. Kendall Fuller, a guy that, that well, he's not, not young by any means. He's 28, 29, uh, uh, I think. Uh, but, I mean, he brings that veteran presence. And he had a really good season with the Washington Commanders on the outside. They, they had kind of taken him from inside to outside and and he had kind of had some ups and downs with this play but i think once they put him primarily on the outside that's that's where he's been at his best and i think with a guy like a kendall fuller you could get him for a two to three year deal on an average of of maybe 12 million dollars on average annual value you know that's not breaking the bank for a cornerback but you're adding a guy in there that would be a really really good fit and and i think especially when you're talking about opposite of of juju brents you know in that gus bradley scheme i don't know i the cat for me if i'm I'm looking at a cornerback in this class to go after Kendall Fuller would be not my number one pick. What about you? You know what? I absolutely love it. I mean, I, I obviously I, I like Xavier, um, uh, Xavier Howard as well, but like the thing is he's coming off of a, a pretty rough year. Okay. Now Kendall Fuller is just not, he just keeps on going and he's also a little bit younger. Um, so I, I mean, 12 million a year for a guy like that, that's, that's cornerback one value or that's cornerback one talent at, at a pretty good value actually when you consider mm-hmm. all because Kenny Moore's worth about 10 10 million dollars or so so it's like you know you're you're not really overspending and you're getting one heck of a veteran who's going to mesh well with the defense he's going to be able to help those youngsters like Juju Brenson and uh the others yeah exactly and and then when you're when you're talking about maybe some other options Drake if I'm being honest not a lot of these options really really move the needle much for me you know if you're talking about a, a JC Jackson he's had so many off the field troubles and then when he has been on the field he's been he's been a pretty bad on the field. So JC Jackson doesn't really move the needle for me. Darius Williams is more of a, um, uh, he, he played inside for a little bit and then he played outside. He was released by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Potentially if the Colts want to add someone like that, I could see. Uh, but again, I, I, he's still, 
a, a definitely a, a rung below uh, Kendall Fuller for me. Uh, but other guys like like Jeff Okuda, eh, that doesn't really move the needle for me there. Uh, C.J. Henderson, potentially, he was a really high pick uh, out of Florida, but mm-hmm. he didn't really pan out too much in in uh, 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 Carolina. There, I found it. Uh, uh, Sha- <laughs> Shaquille Griffin, potentially. I know the Colts had some interest in Shaquille Griffin, but he had kind of fallen off recently. It just seems like, I mean, when you're talking about the uh, uh, the, the cornerback market, it's quite a bit different than, than, than when you're talking about the safety market, because you have a lot of options in safety, but I don't necessarily think that, that too many of the cornerbacks in this class move the needle as much as, as much as like a Kendall Fuller, or if the Colts did end up trading for, for Legereus Sneed. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really interesting because a guy like Kendall Fuller, like we said, would just be perfect because that's kind of what they need. They don't necessarily need a, 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 you know, a young guy, but they don't want to go after a guy that's Stefan Gilmore's age. Okay. He's like, you know, 32, 33, 34. They don't want to go after that. So um, I think the age is perfect. I think he's still in the prime of his career. It's kind of probably at the more back end of it. Um, But Hey, that's what you need right now. You need to develop the the rest of those young corners because there's, there's quite a few young corners and it's still one of the youngest defenses in the league. Now that we've talked about the secondary, Drake, let's move down a little bit further to the defensive line. I know a lot of people have spent talking about the Colts pass rush and needing to add more pass rushers. For me, I've been a stickler about adding some depth behind Grover Stewart, who again, Grover's a free agent. I know people have talked about, well, what if Grover leaves? I I don't expect that. You know, I fully expect, uh, uh, Grover Stewart to return as that def- as that nose tackle in there, but adding depth behind him definitely needs to be addressed for the Indianapolis Colts. We have another super chat this time from DSG Goodbar. Thank you so much for all of your support, buddy. And and it and it comes it uh, comes along with what we're talking about on the defensive line. So DSG Goodbar says, "Sup, fellas? Any chance we prioritize a free agent and or rookie at defensive tackle, even if we re-sign Grove? What do you think is the best way to attack defensive tackle?" So, Drake, what what do you think? Do you think the Colts could? Are there options out there at the defensive tackle position that the Colts could could go after to to put in behind Grover Stewart? Or do you think going with going the draft route would be better suited with looking at that at that nose tackle or that one tackle technique, just depth at that position? Yeah, so it's that's a tough one because like really it's a it's a pretty steep fall off uh after after Grover, you know, as far as like talent. And it's just true. Um you know, the guys on the roster, I think it's like Eric Johnson. They still do have Taven Bryan. Fully expect him to be released, though. Um, Bryan was on a one-year deal, so Bryan will become a free agent. Oh, so he in is a, a free agent. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, um, at, at the end of the day, they're not going to keep Taven Bryan because he was really a liability. Okay, mm-hmm. so I think that if they go in the draft, defensive tackle, if it sucks, but they're they're probably not going to get Fisk at this point. Um, I, I think he's officially out of their range. Mm-hmm. So, um, you, I, I think you go maybe like fourth or fifth round, um, and then you're still going to sign a free agent. I just think if you go a little bit higher in the draft, a defensive tackle, maybe the free agent isn't as big of a signing. Whereas vice versa, if you go out there and you you get like, um, you know, let's just hypothetically say DJ Reader, okay, then you're going to be paying that guy about Grover Stewart money. OK, right. so what's going to end up happening is you're probably not going to invest as much in the in the draft, if at all, because at that point, you're looking at a pretty damn solid guy to rotate in. And you might even have them both on the field with him and Grover at the same time. So there's multiple ways to attack it, but they just cannot have the depth issue because God forbid, if one of those guys tweaks something and they're out for even one game, it immediately just puts a gaping hole right in the middle of that defensive line. Yeah, I would agree there. And there are some names out there on on the free agent market that I definitely wouldn't be opposed to as yeah. as depth options uh right there in the middle. I mean behind Grover Stewart. Uh you talked about DJ Reader. I think he's going to go somewhere that he thinks he he can start. Um but some guys that I think you could potentially get as depth pieces, I mean Quentin Jefferson, uh yeah. I think he could be a good fit right there in the middle. Um a guy like a uh uh 
uh, a Shelby Harris. I thought Shelby Harris was a good fit for the Colts a couple years back, uh, but he was with the Denver Broncos. Shelby Harris, a little bit older. I think he's going to be 33 years old before the season starts, but if you sign him for a one-year deal, I think he would be a good fit there for a backup. Or if you look at guys that, that could potentially reunite with the Colts, guys that used to be on the Colts, now free agents again, Hassan Ridgeway, Lawrence Guy. Both of those players started out their careers with the Indianapolis Colts and, and went on and started and, and played in different areas. Uh, and then a guy that, that hasn't been necessarily uh, or has shown a lot of potential, just can't stay healthy, is Maurice Hurst. I mean, another guy that was with Cleveland last year. Uh, and and when he was out there and, and healthy, he, he was a very good depth at, at the defensive tackle position. But again, it's all about can he stay healthy? So I think there's options out there. It'll be interesting to see if those guys are looking for uh, places that, that they can uh, either start or play a considerable amount of time rather than just potentially just be a backup role. Uh, but then I also, uh, in my latest mock draft, um, I also had the Colts targeting, uh, uh, some, some help on the defensive line as well. So I think, I think you can go both ways. In my opinion, if you can get a cheap veteran and then you don't have to, uh, use a draft pick there. Sure. I think that's probably the way to go. Uh, but I think the Colts will have options as far as the defensive tackle position is concerned. So, so great question, DSG good yeah, bar. Uh, really, we went through our whole, our whole defensive tackle breakdown just on that question alone. <laughs> so really, really appreciate all of your support. Uh, so we went through kind of where the, the main key points are uh, on defense, except for edge Drake. And I just want to touch on this for, for a second. In my opinion, I don't know if the Colts are going to add an edge rusher uh, in free agency because I think that, and as I'll say this again until I'm proven wrong, but everything that I've heard is the Colts are really, really happy with their edge group right now. You know, with Samson Ebukam uh, having all, all three of them really Ebukam, Quiddy Pay. Dio Dangbo all having career years. They want to see what this this trio can do under Charlie Partridge. You know. Add Taekwon Lewis into the mix. The Colts really would like to bring Taekwon Lewis back. And I think that's the group you're going to roll out with as far as uh, veterans are concerned. They might draft one as well to continue to add uh, some youth to that group. But that's that's where I'm thinking. I've seen people in the chat and online say Chase Young. I don't think Chase Young is the type of player the Colts really want in, in their locker room. You know, uh, a guy that doesn't have a motor on every single play, takes plays off, and, and it's very noticeable. I think he's also be more than expensive than what the Colts would ever want to, to pay either. So, you know, and then I know Patrick is all on the Andrew Van Ginkle train as well. Could certainly be a replacement for Tyquan Lewis. Uh, so we'll have to see there. But in my opinion, I don't think Edge is going to be uh, a true position that the Colts look too deeply at in free agency. Yeah, I, I fully expect them. I mean, the free agency part could be them re-signing Tyquan Lewis. Right. right. That's probably what's going to happen because if they let the guy – if, if they retained him after the injuries he's had, all right, and then they and then he does that and stays healthy for an entire season and, and just does a phenomenal job at pressuring the quarterback and even snags four sacks, of course you're going to get him back because, you know, do you really want to get another guy who's going to be Taekwon Lewis value? No, you're, you're probably just going to resign him. And then you may address some defensive edge depth in the draft. You know, maybe there's a, an athlete later on that you take, but I know there's been people that are like, they need an edge rusher in the first round. They don't feel that way. You know, they really, like you said, I think the signing of Charlie Partridge really just says to everyone, hey, this is all we needed was a coaching change to really unlock this team. If you thought 51 sacks was great, they can, you know, over, overshoot that with, with really good coaching. Right. And what, what was the biggest issue that Chris Ballard said that, that the defensive line had, you know, not getting pressure on a consistent basis? Well, Tycon Lewis almost led the team in pressures last year. You know, yeah. he was one of the guys that pressured the quarterback the most. So uh, let's I mean, I, I think that's that's going to be a big factor into keeping Tyquan Lewis and he the Colts love what Tyquan Lewis brings, not only on the field uh, in, in his role as a depth pass rusher, but but in the locker room as well. So let's go to offense now, Drake. And let's talk about a position that that I'm going to be writing on uh, later, and and one that maybe hasn't gotten as much talk at recently. That's the backup quarterback position. 
you know, because it does seem like the Colts would love uh, to bring in a veteran quarterback at backup ra- as a backup rather than rolling with Sam Ellinger or going and drafting a quarterback in this class. Uh, you still want that guy there to mentor Anthony Richardson. And, and all things considered, and from what we've heard, it does not seem like Gardner Minshew is going to be back with this team in 2024. He would like to go somewhere else where he's going to have the opportunity to start. So, as far as the backup quarterback is concerned, you have uh, you could either go with a guy that has more of the skill set of of Anthony Richardson, or a guy that you, that you can trust uh, that regardless of his skill set, that he's going to come in and win you some games. But the ideal solution, Drake, is to have have a combination of both. Yes, and I there's multiple guys that that really fit that bill. I understand that Gardner Minshew did what he did, but it's really just a matter that he's probably outside of the price range of the Colts at this point, you know. Mm-hmm. And and also after going to the Pro Bowl, I know it was kind of ridiculous, uh, but he's still like you said, Pro Bowl or Gardner Minshew. Guess what? You can bump that up about a million dollars. Okay, I know that I think his value is at like five or six million. I still think it's going to be, you know, seven eight, and the Colts aren't going to fork over that kind of money. Um, I will say, I think they're going to go this time, Andrew, with more of who fits kind of a similar Anthony Richardson skill set. It's kind of like your poor man's, if you will. Mm-hmm. But I would say a guy like Tyler Huntley, you know, yes. is probably going to be pretty cheap. Uh, and that offense at times when Lamar was out, they kept going because he's still freaking fast and he's still got a hell of an arm. You know, he can throw the ball real far down the field. So uh, he, he didn't really miss a beat. A guy like If you're going on the higher end, Josh Dobbs, but he's probably going to be worth what Gardner Minshew is because he started quite a few games. Um, But then the last guy is actually Tyrod Taylor. I think that if you want the veteran side of things, that's a guy that used to start and actually had very efficient numbers. He just wasn't a fireworks kind of guy. You know, he was just very efficient and clean with the football. So um, in my opinion, that's actually the best fit. It's probably Tyrod Taylor. I would agree there. You know, you you took the took the words right out of my mouth. Oh. You know, a Tyrod Taylor, I think, would be uh, uh, probably the prior uh, option number one, in my opinion, for for the Indianapolis Colts. He's been a backup for a while. There are some injury concerns with Tyrod Taylor, but uh, he's come in. Uh, and he's he's shown that multiple times in multiple stops he can come in and, and win some games and and Taylor has some has a, a, a history with Shane Steichen as well. Shane Steichen was the offensive coordinator with the Los Angeles Chargers when Tyrod Taylor was there as a Charger before uh, he got his lung punctured and then lost the job to to Justin Herbert. So but, injury prone, Andrew. He punctures yeah, his own lung. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it, we'll, we'll, we'll put the, that one on the Chargers medical staff. Yeah. But yeah, Tyrod Taylor and, and Tyler Huntley, I think probably go to the top of the list as far as backup quarterbacks for Anthony Richardson and then I, I mean I see I see DSG Goodbar uh, saying Jacoby Brissett as a backup might be interesting I, I just J- Jacoby's not coming back guys I think Jacoby Brissett wants to go to a place where he's going to have the opportunity to start you know that's what he did in Washington that's why he left the Colts in the first place and I, I mean if anywhere I think Brissett might reunite with New England if they do if they decide uh not to go with a quarterback or or, or maybe they bring him in as insurance so but yeah I don't see Jacoby Brissett back in a Colts uniform but the last quarterback Drake and I don't know how how thrilled I would be as a Colts fan uh, uh for this one Marcus Mariota you know, I think Marcus Mariota has definitely had better days. A couple yeah. of years ago, I was clamoring for Marcus Mariota to be uh, the backup quarterback or the bridge quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, but I don't know about now. You know, it seems like he has definitely taken a, a step back in in play. But I think those are the three guys that that if that I would keep an eye on is Tyrod Taylor, uh, Tyler Huntley, who's also a Pro Bowl quarterback, if you remember, and then Marcus Mariota. Yeah, yeah, and look. This we need to address this too. Sam Ellinger. There's been, you know, I'm sure people out there that are always going to support Sam, and that's great. But the guy is is really an insurance. He's almost an insurance policy at quarterback. That's just in case you know a lot of unfortunate crap happens to your starter and the backup. He's just not a backup quarterback, You're you right. know. And the fact that he started a couple years ago, or excuse me, well, no, it is a couple seasons ago. That's just because the Colts had no one else. All right. Mm. So I, I I think that it's valuable to spend money on a on a a backup quarterback, but keep in mind Gardner Minshew's contract was one year, three point five million dollars. He signed for cheap, right? All right, so I, I just I say get a guy that can back up Richardson, but don't overspend because there's still plenty of other things you can do with the uh, available cap you got left. 
I agree. I apologize, DSG. Goodbye. That wasn't you. Your, your comment was right above the comment that I highlighted. So that's why I called you out. It was actually Chetman, but then Chetman said in, the, in another comment, uh, he probably wants to go somewhere and start. So, hey, we mm -hmm. got it all cleared up, guys. I, I apologize on that one. But yeah. let's take a look at some other positions on offense, Drake, uh, specifically wide receiver and, and running back. You know, it, obviously you're you're probably set at, at running back with Jonathan Taylor. If not, then something definitely went wrong after paying that man uh, forty two million dollars. So uh, you're talking about depth at the running back position, but you're also talking about depth at the at wide receiver. You know, because when you when you look at the wide receiver market, Drake, I mean, there are some guys out there that that could come in and be starters. Uh, yeah. I would say like a uh, uh, like a Calvin Ridley, um, uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown, uh, those types of guys. But in my opinion, that's just not who the Colts are are probably going to go after uh, uh, in the free agent market. You're probably looking at guys that that are going to add depth instead. And you remember, Chris Ballard at the combine said, "I didn't do." a good enough job of addressing the wide receiver depth this year and at the end of that depth chart it was a constant rotation of of a practice squad guys so if the colts do sign a wide receiver uh, i would assume it's going to be guys that are going to fill out that that back end of the depth chart uh with with a guy like ashton doolin so you're looking at, at wide receivers number number four five and six at, at this point since we haven't gotten to the nfl draft yeah and there's there's plenty of names because you're also talking about one of the most loaded receiver classes that we, that we've seen in recent memory. Um, this, this receiver class is so loaded in the 2024, 2024 draft that you could probably still grab yourself a pretty damn good pick in like rounds four and five. So um, I I'm right there with you, man. I think that they're going to go more depth. I think some guys that have stood out to us that we've talked about Noah Brown, you know, he's mm -hmm. a big play receiver. Big, a big receiver in his own right. He's had some issues with injuries and whatnot, but he really fits what they're trying to do. Um, I, I think if you're going on the higher end, of course, Marquise Brown would be a really nice splash. But look at guys like, you know, I, I'd say, here we go, Mark, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. That's another big play receiver. He's had some hands hands issues. But, man, I really think Steichen could, could do some interesting things with him because Richardson has a, a – an arm like Mahomes as far as the strength and he's got the mobility that could really help Scantling get open, you know, or Valdez Scantling get open. So um, I think one more guy that's kind of interesting would be Josh Reynolds. But mm -hmm. the one thing is his hands scare the crap out of me. He dropped <laughs> crucial catches in the biggest game of his life. And look, it sucks, you know, felt bad for him, but that doesn't help the team win. And they didn't win. And who knows what happens if he catches those balls. So those are the kind of free agents that we think the Colts are going to pick if they if they go that way with wide receiver. Really not going to get those big name guys. Yeah, and I do think that that when you look at this wide receiver free agency class, you know, because the the 2024 draft class of wide receivers is is so chock full of talent. It drives the prices of those guys down. Again, supply and demand. Everyone's yeah. there could be a lot of teams to say no. We're just going to wait to till the till the draft and 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 get our get our picks there. Well, you know the Colts could get some of these guys for cheap. You know, to, to uh, on a one year deal for three million dollars, something like that. And I love how you picked how you said Noah Brown. He's another one. He's a favorite of mine that the Colts could really look at. Not only because he would add to this wide receiver room, but also because you're taking. A a weapon away from a division rival in in uh, in the Houston Texans. So Noah Brown is definitely an option. Uh, uh, I do like Josh Reynolds as well. Uh, I know G GSG Goodbar saying Darnell Mooney. You know, Darnell Ooh. Mooney could be a sneaky pick as a slot wide receiver uh, for for the Colts. I, I feel like the Bears are going to try to keep him. I could be completely off on that. Uh, but but if not, I mean, that's certainly an option. He's got speed, would certainly open up the field. Uh, I think his skill sets fit really well with uh, uh, with Anthony Richardson. Darnell Mooney could be a very intriguing piece in the Shane Steichen offense. Uh, but again, we'll have to kind of see how the, how the market kind of views these guys. But yeah, Drake, I think if the Colts, like I said, if they are going to going to go after what these kinds of wide receivers, it's going to be guys that are, are really cheap, probably on one year deals. You're trying to fill out the back end of that depth on the depth chart. So that way, 
you're you're not going to be a guy that's going through uh, uh, going through constant uh, practice squad additions to really fill out the back end of your your depth chart throughout the season. You know, I that's why I think. I would not be surprised with a lower end wide receiver move or maybe two in free agency. Yeah. And, uh, I, I actually love what Patrick said there. You know, would, let's just say Darnell Mooney, you know, gets signed. Okay. Would he be okay being the wide receiver three or five though? Well, he'd have to be because his last two seasons, he's caught 71 passes for barely over 900 yards. You're talking about rookie season. He had 61 catches for 631. And then 2021, he absolutely blew up. Okay. He had 81 catches, 1,055 uh, uh, receiving yards and four scores. So I think you'd have to settle for that because he's coming off two pretty bad years. I know the bears were kind of a mess, but you know, he obviously showed he could do it before with Justin Fields. So I, I think that he would have to settle for that position. Yeah. And, and I, again, I, I think there's, there might, there's probably be another team that offers Mooney a, a bigger role than he would get with the Indianapolis yeah. Colts. That's why it takes two to tango here, guys. Uh, the, the player also has to come, want to come to Indianapolis. So, and then finally, let's talk about the running backs, Drake. I, to me, I think the biggest, the biggest chance of a running back coming in and playing with the, the Colts Honestly, Zach Moss, you know, as, as you look at this running back class, if you want a veteran running back, I mean, boy, do I have good news for you. You're talking about the top of the market, looking at guys like Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Derek Henry, Tony Pollard, uh, Austin Eckler, uh, guys like that, you know, that, that are, that could really be a bell cow back for you. And then the second, the second tier, you're talking about guys like Cordell Patterson, uh, Gus Edwards, Alexander Mattis's, Zeke Elliott, Devin Singletary, uh, Deandre Swift. There's a lot of running back names, JK Dobbins, who, uh, has been hurt, but can still get it done. AJ Dillon. There's there's so many big names out there, Drake. That honestly, Zach Moss. Uh, who who knows uh, if, if if what he's going to be offered on that next contract? Before you answer, Drake, I want to give a shout out to Yim here for the two dollar super chat. Thank you so much. And Yim says thanks for the content. Just had my second baby girl. Well, congrats to you. Congrats to your family. Uh, join a, a second baby girl, so you are already a, a member of the Girl Dad Club, just like Drake here. Uh, so congrats, Yim, and, and thank you so much for all of your support. But Drake, what do you think? You know, do you think that uh, uh, the Colts are going to look for a veteran running back? Is that not something that's going to be in the cards for them? And what about Zach Moss? Because the longer we go, the more likely it is. I think he's back with the Indianapolis Colts just strictly on, on market value. Yeah, and uh, real quick, Patrick had mentioned 73 catches in a season um, is, uh, is, is like the ring of honor for the Bears. Um, I, I don't know if you heard, I, and maybe I didn't specify, he's had 70, I think it's 71 catches over the last two years. So it's like 31 and then 40. So he's Mooney's just struggled a little bit. But I, I think as far as running back, yeah, Zach Moss, because his market value is just dwindling. You know, it, it was like six million dollars, and then here comes a couple other big name guys. Now it's four point six. That's his market value according to Spotrack. So it's like, yeah, I think that if the Colts do want to keep him, that's pretty freaking cheap, especially given what he did with the offense. Now the the question is, do you trust Trey Sermon? You know, do you trust Evan Hall to take over the second role or the RB2 role? Do you want to grab a guy in the draft because there's still some talent? So if they don't want to spend any money, I say let him walk, like, honestly. Yeah, and again, it's probably going to be an instance where uh, – where you go and see Zach Moss go test the market and, and see what he likes. If he has an opportunity to start somewhere, he'll probably take it. If not, then he probably comes back to the Colts. The market has been set on him and the Colts could probably get him uh, for pretty cheap. But if not, I think the Colts would be just fine going into the draft as well to get somebody to add behind Jonathan Taylor. And don't forget about Evan Hall as well. I think Evan Hall is going to have a pretty big role in this offense next year behind Jonathan Taylor that's going to limit whoever whoever that second back is uh, behind Taylor. So Moss, Moss's value would probably decrease even more uh, uh, with the Colts. So going through all of those positions, Drake, the only one we didn't touch on was offensive line, which is kind of like uh, uh, probably looking to add some depth there. We'll, we'll kind of see how that shakes out in the end. But overall, 
do you think that the Colts are going to be more aggressive because of that added flexibility? Again, fifty million dollars in cap space that's going to that's going to get bigger, or uh, that's that's going to increase. Excuse me. Once they finally get Michael Pittman Jr. signed to his long term extension, uh, but but what do you think is going to happen? You know, are we going to see some bigger names and and bigger fish added to this to this Indianapolis Colts pond, or or are we is it going to be business as usual? You know, more of those mid tier signings, uh, uh, not not too active within the first week of free agency. Uh, what's your gut telling you, buddy? You know. Uh- Kind of rapid fire. I think that they're if you're talking about aggressive in the in, in the way of like they're going to get a, multiple guys, then I think yes, I, I think that they'll grab you know an offensive line depth piece, maybe a defensive tackle depth piece, um, more of kind of what we said with cornerback Kendall. I think if they make any splashes, it's going to be at safety and it's going to be at corner because mm-hmm. now, especially with safety, that opens up a lot of things. You already assumed they were going to do it for corner. Okay, now it really kind of makes things interesting for safety. So um, I think that they'll be aggressive in the way of like, let's go get multiple things handled here. Okay. But as far as like big names, I think the biggest name you'll get is probably a cornerback because I really do think that Alohi Gilman, that fit is so perfect. It's almost ridiculous, but who knows? They could also get a guy like Xavier McKinney if they want to fork over a little more. Right. DSG Goodbar asks about tight end. Yeah, the Colts are signing a tight end this offseason. His name's Brock Bowers out of the University of Georgia. So problem solved right there. Uh <laughs> that's that's all that needs to be said about the at tight end 15, position. That's where at, at, at number 15, uh, maybe number 12. Who knows? Uh, but but Drake, yeah, I, I do think that the if if they do if the Colts do add big names, it's gonna be at safety and quarterback to really shore up the back end of that secondary. Because again, the Colts, Chris Ballard said it as plain as could be coming into this off season. Uh, you're, you're, you're going to where we want to, we want to limit explosive plays on the defensive side of the ball and we need to be more explosive on offense. So the first way to do that is to add a cornerback like Kendall Fuller, a guy that you don't have to pay $20 million a year for. You could easily get him for around, like I said, average annual value, probably $12 billion a year uh, for a couple seasons. And you bring Kenny Moore back that solidifies you as for starters on, in the cornerback position you look, and if you're happy with Julian Blackman, sure, go for it. If you want an upgrade there, Xavier McKinney, I think would be a fantastic fit. Alohi Gilman. I mean, I'm going to say that is just the, quintessential Chris Ballard signing would remind Perfect. me so much of the Samson Ebucom signing a guy that is starting to come up hasn't really produced a lot but you're going to see that guy and uh, uh, you're going to be able to sign him for 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 a good deal three-year deal or so and and for on the low and he's just going to go out there and absolutely produce for you so that's where I see the big the big moves being made again a wide receiver running back offensive line defensive line it's probably going to be all depth signing in my opinion, guys that'll fill out the end of the roster, get the depth behind Grover Stewart, uh, uh, get that the, the wide receiver four, five, and six kind of figured out there, potentially bring in another running back. But if you're looking for the big names, it's going to be cornerback and safety. And boy, is it a good year to have a need at that safety position, really for strong and for free. Yeah, and it's it's even better that multiple guys fell to the open market in, in such a short time because the market value has turned a lot of good fits into bargain pieces. And even guys like Alohi Gilman, who already weren't going to make top dollar, now he might even be cheaper. Exactly. DSG Goodbar with the $2 super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. And he's giving us free publicity. You can read all about Bowers in the Indie Draft Guide. So those who joined late, make sure you go and 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 get your copy of the Indie Draft Guide. I'm going to pull up the pull up the picture right here. Over 225 prospects with features. Brock Bowers, I will personally be writing up Brock Bowers right up in his fit with the Colts. So you already know uh, how that one's going to turn out. Spoiler alert but use the use the uh the link in the description uh and use the code draftmas for a dollar off uh make sure you go get your pre-order of the indie draft guide and i just wanted to say uh thank you to everybody that's tuning in tonight to talk colts football with us we're currently at 201 live viewers on our stream which is Woo! fantastic uh, you guys are absolutely killing it and love that you guys love the content here so free agency it's going to be a wild time and i think the colts like i said there they might not go and get every big name you want 
but I have a feeling they're going to be a little bit more active than they normally are and might just bring in a pretty big name or two in especially in the secondary so drake let's talk about the latest colts news and rumors and here's a big one here's another name that could be potentially added to uh, uh to the the secondary and then we're not even talking about kendall fuller we're talking about legerious sneeze so it has been reported uh by multiple outlets now that the colts have reportedly reached out to the chiefs uh to gauge the interest in a trade uh for cornerback legerious sneeze but the Chiefs did place the franchise tag on Sneed, uh, but they have allowed uh, uh, his 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 representatives and, and Sneed to go out and, and search for a trade, uh, be just in case they cannot get a long term deal done. So, I mean, hey, Drake, uh, Sneed would be a, a a very good fit in in the, the Gus Bradley defense. He I think would be a, a really good fit opposite of of Juju Brents because Sneed again is a long corner. He's got the the athletic attributes that the Colts want in their cornerbacks. Uh but he's got that speed, that twitch element. And while he has maybe struggled at times in free a, in the regular season, Legarius Sneed has really really shown up in the in, in playoffs and I think that that the Colts and I know stats Matt uh, is is all on the the need to indie train that would be the type of big move that that the colts have been prone to make in the past to trade for a real difference maker i don't know if he'd be a difference maker say on the same level as like a deforest buckner i don't think he would cost as much as deforest buckner meaning i don't think the colts would have to give up a first round pick for legerious sneed uh but if the, we got to keep this in mind as well if the colts did trade for legerious sneed they're also going to have to pay him as well he wants a big time contract yeah and look it, it it's going to completely change your secondary. All right. It might not be DeForest Buckner, but it's going to be, I would say in many regards, kind of close just because it is one of the top corners in the entire league. Now, the thing is I'm looking here, the guy is going to be worth about, so he's, he's got the, the 19, $20 million a year, I think, or no, the 19, 20 million tag, right. Isn't that about what corners are worth? Yes. On the tag? Correct. Yeah, so, so uh, Spotrack has his value at sixteen point three million a year if he gets a contract. I just think it's going to be a little more than that. So the Colts would be giving up quite a bit. They'd have to pay him, and like you said, maybe not a couple first round picks, um, but you'd still have to give some early round picks nonetheless. And the Chiefs are going to they're going to start building the future with that. So um, we'll see. I don't see the Colts doing it. I think that they're just kind of doing their due diligence and you know not just sitting on it. But if they made that kind of transition. I know it costs a lot, but damn, that's one hell of an addition. Yeah, and I know the Colts have been interested in Sneed for a while now. So this isn't this isn't new like all of a sudden. They're, 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 they think that Sneed would be a good addition. The Colts have, and Chris Ballard and that group have really liked what Legarius Sneed would bring to this team. Uh, I don't think it would cost as much as as it did for DeForest Buckner uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, Buckner was for the 13th overall pick. I don't think, the Colts aren't giving up their first round picks. You guys don't have to worry about that. Uh, for me, I think a, a second round pick could put a second and, and maybe a fifth round pick could potentially get it done uh, for Legarius Sneed. Uh, maybe a second and a fourth at, at most would be able to get it done uh and then uh, again you'd probably you'd have to sign him to a long-term deal stats matt brings up a good point that he'd probably get around the uh, the contract that jalen johnson signed for with the chicago bears today i think that was around four years 76 million 72 million somewhere yeah. around there for an it's average 19. annual value of about 19 million a year so if you're for sneed you're probably also looking for around 18 19 a year on a on a on a long-term deal and that's what the cost is for an elite cornerback on the outside. So we'll see if that happens again. I, the Colts haven't made a, an offer as far as I know, they've just kind of went and engaged the interest of the Kansas city chiefs potential and, and see, see how available Snead actually is. But Hey, Snead is the type of player that the Colts would swing big for the fences for. And if, if a, if a trade did happen, you know, to bring Legarius Sneed on board. It honestly, it wouldn't surprise me one bit from Chris Ballard and his group because you would bring back a Julian Blackman. And uh, you could still probably afford a Logie Gilman for on the cheap, you know, if you wanted to bring that, that strong safety in. But that's the type of player, that's the type of big fish, big, big name that, that Chris Ballard has shown before to go and, and, and make a move for. So if Sneed really is available, don't, don't count the Colts out. 
Yeah, and it's in a position where it was a big issue last season, and it was young, and it's still young, and you have a depth issue still. So they probably might still pick up somebody in the draft in the later rounds. But like you said, that'd be one hell of a move. I just still think that kind of like Patrick says, I bet you they go that route. Like the McKinney at safety, Fuller at cornerback. I think that that's more realistic and cheaper too. And those guys probably aren't going to last on the market very long. Yeah, so no. if the Colts do want to make moves for those guys, it's going to be going to be fairly quick in free agency. They're not they're not going to be able to wait around very long for the, for the Chiefs to make a deal. That that deal would probably have to come together uh, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, let's move on to the next little bit of Colts news, Drake, and and this is is some good news, you know, on on the on the legal front for Colts tight end Drew Ogletree, uh, as this week domestic domestic violence charges uh, against. Drew Ogletree have been dismissed after uh, the, the Hendricks County uh, police investigation did not find sufficient evidence. So, uh, and because of that, Drew Ogletree has been, I mean, he's been acquitted, uh, all the charges dropped, so he has been proven uh, to innocent in, in a court of law. So so that's, that's good news. However, that doesn't mean that Ogletree is completely out of the woods yet in terms of the NFL, because Ogletree does still remain uh, on the NFL's commissioner exam list because the league is still going to undergo and, and conduct their own investigation into all of this before they determine if any uh, punishment is needed. So uh, while he has been cleared uh, as far as the legal sense, there's still an investigation to come on the NFL side. Yeah, and it's it's all going to hinge on that. You know, at this point, the Colts get to take their hands off of it and just let the you know the the process uh, move forward. So hey, you know what? If everything goes right. Who knows? You know, Ogletree might be might be retained just because it's kind of like an OK, uh, we were wrong type of situation. But I, that's that's kind of interesting, actually, to think about if, is if everything goes right. You know, I wonder if they do think about bringing him back. Yeah, I mean, they haven't made the move yet. Well, once the, the NFL's investigation is done, then the Colts will have the opportunity to either move move on from local tree or, or welcome him back with, with open arms. So uh, definitely something that we'll be monitoring throughout the offseason. And then finally, Drake, the signing we've all been waiting for. The Colts signed center Jack Anderson to a contract extension this week. Obviously, all eyes were on Michael Pittman Jr. and his contract situation when really the Colts were, were getting a deal done with Jack Anderson. So add, it brings back some some depth on the interior of the Colts' uh, uh, offensive line. Uh, I think Anderson, he didn't play much last year, mostly on special teams, uh, but hey. I mean, you still need that that offensive line depth, and and Anderson is going to be a guy that, at the very least, will compete for for a spot on the interior there uh, through training camp. Yeah, and he also played some. He's played some guard too in his career, so you know he's a little bit versatile. He's a good mm -hmm. athlete, and he's played, I think, with the Bills and the Giants, if I'm not mistaken. So, correct. Um, not a huge name, but hey, depth matters. You got to have the backups, man. It it definitely does. So yeah. So Drake, free agency literally just a few days away from the legal tampering period begin the Colts are going to go out and get the huge names that that everybody's talking about at the very tip top of the free agent pool but they've got some flexibility and and I think what Shane Steichen did last year and what Anthony Richardson has shown so far the window is creaking open for the Indianapolis Colts to make some noise with Anthony Richardson on this rookie contract the time to strike is 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 starting now you know, so if they, I think that that there's going, they're going to be a little bit more aggressive than they have been in years past. And if it's if if they do pull the trigger for Snead, I, I think it'll be early. But if not, I'd keep my eye on Kendall Fuller and Xavier McKinney to be pretty big additions uh, to the secondary for the Indianapolis Colts potentially. Yeah, and look, they've got the money, they've got the the ability to make it happen, and you don't have to go overspend uh, unless you get Snead, of course. So we'll see. But like you said, I fully expect them also to make moves, man. They've got plenty of areas to address. Exactly. So that's our show for tonight, guys. Really appreciate everybody tuning in and, and talking Colts football with us as we get set for free agency, as we got 217 uh, of you guys live watching. Just fantastic. Lo love every single one of you guys. And thank you so much for joining and supporting us uh, each and every time we, we like to talk Colts football with you guys uh, throughout the week. Shout out to our super chats, Truett, Patrick, Shaheen, GSG Goodbar, and Yim. Uh, and, and Yim, a 
again, congratulations on the second baby girl. That is fantastic. So always, always good to hear. And if you guys are new here, uh, please go follow us on all of our socials. Like Horseshoe Huddle on Facebook. Follow at Colts on FN on X and subscribe to the Horseshoe Huddle YouTube channel. Hit that bell so you know when Drake and I go live, especially during the offseason for there can be potentially breaking news episodes. So you'd make sure you want to turn those notifications on so you never miss us on YouTube. But if you can't catch us live, no worries. Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, we're on there as well. So make sure you subscribe, give us a five-star review, and, and so that way we can reach other Colts fans just like you. And again, please don't forget to go order the Indie Draft Guide. Link is in the description. Use the code DRAFTMIS for a dollar off. It's what we'll be using all draft season long. Drake, I know you've still been riding away, even with a newborn. You've been pushing out content on HorseshoeHuddle.com. Go tell the people what they need to go check out. Uh, so I, I did update on the on the, um, the Drew Ogletree situation. I wrote a little bit about the the, uh, the uh, Jack Anderson extension, but I also did an interesting one from Bleacher Report where they they have a suggestion as who the Colts should sign in free agency, and it's it's a defensive tackle, and it's a freaking expensive one. So go check that out and let us know your thoughts. Definitely go check that out. NFL Nerd with the final Super Chat of the evening. Really appreciate all right. of your support, NFL Nerd. And he says the dad club in the house. Absolutely. And, hey, I'm joining that in just a couple of months here. So really, really excited to do that. And NFL Nerd, thank you so much for all of your support. Uh, pieces that you can check out for me on HorseshoeHuddle.com. Uh, I did put up that piece on Michael Pittman Jr. getting the franchise tag and dug deeper into that and where negotiations currently stand between the Colts and Michael Pittman Jr. And guys, be on the lookout for uh, another article talking about the potential backup quarterback options for the Indianapolis Colts here in free agency. Because if I had to bet, I would say that, that one of these veterans is going to be on the Indianapolis Colts this coming fall. So make sure you check that out, as well as the, all the other writings uh, from our fantastic uh, uh, group here at HorseshoeHuddle.com. Go follow Drake at Drake. You can follow me at Andrew Moore NFL and we'll be back Monday night as the legal tampering period begins and free agents start flying off the board. We'll be here to recap it all with you and, and talk some more free agency about your Indianapolis Colts. So everyone enjoy the weekend and gear up because free agency this year is going to be one wild ride.